Boys and girls, Alex here. Been a while since I've made a video, so here we go. This is not a one of my stupid puzzles, but actually a shop workshop tip. Now, I for my woodworking, I use a lot of uh, what they call hard burnishing oil, tongue oil, which I tend not to use that often because it's bloody expensive. That's pure tongue oil. It also needs to be broken down with citrus oil to, because that is just too, just too rich. The hard burnishing oil, I bought this can because it was on special at Bunnings. Now if you have a look, that's $42.75 on special. Can't remember how much it was reduced. I'd hate to imagine how much this costs. Now, I like to decant no, I, I, I buy these in bulk because they are cheaper and I like to decant them into glass jars so I actually do buy, specifically buy certain things like pickled onions and gherkins and stuff like that just to get the glass jars. And unfortunately decanting oil is not like vino. Like vino, if you don't decant enough you can decant more same with the oil and if you decan too much you just drink the bloody thing this you can't and you can't tip it back in or you're going to contaminate it so you keep it in your jar but if you're like me and you're slack and you might wait two or three days between coats or your next project might be a month away the tongue oil shellac is sitting in the jar and if it's not a hundred percent waterproof, uh, waterproof, airproof, uh, yeah, uh, not airproof, airtight is the word. You can see what happens, and try as you might, you're not going to get that bloody lid on or lid off, or it's going to be hard to get the lid off. Even with this, the pourers are not ideal. You decant it, put the lid back on and then you can't get the bloody thing off again. Same thing actually with saying, yeah, you can do it, but, well, I can't. My hands are too buggered. So, what I used to do, well, in the, this came from the kitchen. I used to open all my jars and uh, stuff with this little duvet. However, when you put it on the lid and you tightened it, well, that one didn't work, that's the one, um, the chances are it's always too big, squeeze it, and it's going to perforate the lid with these little indentations. Potentially, I don't know, I never did any scientific studies with regards to how it affects the air tightness of the lid, but I don't think, I think it would do more damage than good. So... I relegated this to the workshop down here and for the kitchen I bought this which is absolutely well semi brilliant that is too small for that lid this is the right one but to do it you still got to put pressure on it and when you put pressure those little prongs dig in it goes back to the same old thing when they say you whack the lid on a table top if you can't undo the jar. What that does is it actually puts an, usually puts a in, small indent onto your lid, breaks up the air tightness so you can take the lid off. That one's okay because it's a clean glass. And therefore that wasn't ideal for the workshop or a jar up in the kitchen that I then want to bring down to the workshop. I then discovered these little beauties. They're called a strap wrench. Usually used by mechanics for pulleys and oil filters and stuff like that. Uh, plumbers for their um, plumbing. <laughs> uh, PVC piping and all that. However, I found these ideal for the jars. However, the problem was, for some of them, they're okay. You know, like... On this one, again, bear in mind, I've still got my gummy left hand 
The thumb on my right hand is dodgy because I tried to cut it off so there's little feeling. So for one, it's not so bad. But because, because of the roundness of the jar, I often find what I need to do is use two of them. And actually I like this other one better because uh, this thing that always keeps falling out. So let's line this up the right way. Now to undo the jar you've got to get your line your ducks up in a row and make sure you're doing it the right way. Put this one on the bottom. This one goes on the top. Now, actually I'll do it this way. I hope you can all see this. And then the beauty of this is, this, these teeth close in on the rubber band. Therefore it doesn't dent the thing. Put it on its side and just give it a slight twist to get it started. But once you've got it started, stop. Because what you'll find is you decanted the first time from the tin to the jar. The second time you decant it or you try and open, you decant it onto the front of your t-shirt. And then you've got that open. And as you can see, there it is. Um, oh, there's still some life left in there, but I don't think I'll be using it. All right, that's probably ready for the scrap bin. I don't need the jar, I've got plenty of them. Now, for the small ones, small jars, get this out of the way, I've got these little ones. And again, same principle, this is shellac. This has been sitting in there for probably four or five months. The j lid just won't come off. So, again, on there, on the top, pull this tight, and as I say, I usually put it down on the tabletop, and I bring these up high, so I can then exert pressure down there, and these rubber mats stop it from slipping. Just get it started, ah, that's it, ah, there you are, I've already got it started, and it's already started spilling. Um, hang on, I'll just go and get some rags and then be back. Okay, I'm back, I've cleaned it up, hang on, I haven't cleaned this up. Um, get the shellac off it. Um, oh, shit, got it everywhere. And it bloody sticks. Hang on, I might go and clean this up properly, get some metho because this is going to stick and my hands are sticking. Okay, cleaned up. Isn't it good that I'm not perfect? You can see somebody else stuff up other than yourself. Alright, now the other good thing is these, I don't know whether this will work or not. That hasn't been opened so I won't try it on that. But I'll see if... This needs a bit of coating. I know with it, I couldn't undo it with my finger. Ah, oh, there you are. Got it moving, and then that's it. Once you've done that, ah, it's tight. You can see all the um, tongue all caked up on there. I'll do it back up, and I'll even actually coax it to get tight, only because that way I can ensure that it's going to be airtight or stay airtight. You can see how much further I've done other than by hand. Now, the other good thing is it works just as well and this is a bugger to take off as well. Um, is it going to work? Ah, there you are. Got it moving. Look, you might be able to, if you've got bloody gorilla hands, you'll be able to do it probably. But, this does a much better job 
and it doesn't my uh, thing. Now, you also notice that I still think using two of them are a pain in the ass. That's why I tend to opt for square jars wherever I can. Because that way, what I can do, camera off, camera on. I can put the square jar into my voice. Hang on, get that out of the way. As you can see, what I have got, I've got a lump of wood to make sure I bring the lid over the top of it. Now for this I usually need a large handle. Tighten that up in the vice Lamo. That was a bit tight too because that's probably been in there for a while. And as you can see there you are. If you have a close look at it, I don't know. Shit. Um, you can see all the clag up on it. So, hang on, put the lid back on. And what I'll do is I'll put this, where is it? This is the one. Put the lid back on. Use a, enough force so that it'll get a decent seal. So it's still usable. And after all that, you'll notice there's no marks on the lid it's still as pristine as it used to be so there you have it and that seal so that's it boys and girls these um, strap wrenches are ideal for that and if you don't want to use it in your workshop take one up to your kitchen and use it or use it to take your shoes off if it fits you alright boys and girls that's it Uru and keep safe.